Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Worcester County Executive. Uh, we're glad you're here for the rollout of our Census 2020 Complete Count Committee, which is the first time that Westchester government, county government, has ever made the decision to actively get involved in trying to ensure an accurate and a complete count for uh, the uh, decennial, I hope that's the right word, census, census that occurs every 10 years. Uh, this is not a unique situation. You're seeing now uh, the state government and many other communities uh, are starting to do the same thing. There's a sense that, uh, as we have in Westchester County, that uh, we need to make extra effort to make sure that all of the people that live in Westchester County are properly counted. It is a matter of representation in government uh, uh, positions, legislative positions that are allocated based on population. And it's also important in terms of grantsmanship as we go to both the state and the federal government that we have an accurate account of uh, how many people live in the county, the number of people that have to receive the services that we provide, and that we're uh, compensated in grant programs uh, by that based on that population. And uh, I think we all understand that uh, we're also dealing at a time where we have a new federal administration. This is the first time they'll be doing a census. And, uh, you know, we have to see exactly what level of a commitment they have and how much resources they're going to put into an accurate and full and complete census count. But we don't want to rely on good faith or, or whatever. Uh, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can do and to do it as partners with the local governments. I see uh, newly elected village trustee in Port Chester, Joan uh, Grenoir. Uh, Thomas is with us, and she's involved in the Census 2020 effort in Port Chester, and uh, most of the other counties in the state have also made these announcements as well. The mission uh, is very simple. We want to make sure that if you reside in Westchester County, you are counted, and the potential loss of dollars and representation is, is what goes into effect. <coughs> we have uh, currently uh, three separate members of the United States House of Representatives that represent portions of Westchester County, Neil Lowy, Elliot Engel, and Sean Patrick Maloney. And uh, at that level of uh, legislative representation, they want districts to be of equal population down to within one individual. So when they do district lines for congressional lines, uh, they divide communities and, and get very, very precise down into blocks to make sure they have exactly the right number of people. So if we're going to have that kind of precision, uh, in federal redistricting, then we have to make sure that we have that kind of position in counting how many people live in those different areas. When we deal with uh, the state legislature, the state senate, and the state assembly, and then also how we allocate the 17 districts in Westchester County. Um, there are parts of the county that are growing more than other parts of the county, and uh, to make sure that each of the 17 legislators represent uh, as close to the, the, the same amount as possible. There are different rules that apply to the county and the state legislature. There are medians and percentages and so forth. It is not as it is at the, at the federal level down to an individual. However, we have provisions about what we can and can't split when we do redistricting, and we'll talk a lot more about redistricting when we get to that part of uh, this term uh, in 2021. But uh, we at the county level cannot divide a village. Uh, in, in the way we go about doing redistricting. At the state level, they can divide a city, but they cannot divide a town or a village unless the town is of a certain size or larger. Uh, and um, unlike, say, Long Island, where we have towns that are hundreds of thousands of people and they can divide the town, we don't have that provision here. So it's very, very important for, for legal representation in these bodies that we have an accurate count as much as possible. We know that we have hard-to-reach communities to participate in the census. So in putting together this committee, I'm going to introduce the co-chairs in a second. We want to make sure that we have representation on the committee of individuals who will help us be able to identify how best to reach out to those uh, targeted communities. Some of the targets are geographic and urban versus uh, suburban, in some cases rural. In some cases, are demographic targets. We have a member of this committee who is a college student, because many times college students are much harder to track down. They identify themselves as residing in the home where their parents are, or are they residing wherever their college experiences are? And there are people who go to college here in Westchester County who choose to vote in Westchester County, but are they tracked by the census here? Uh, and so forth. And we also know, uh, and it was reflective in the language access uh, executive order that we did a few uh, weeks ago, that language can be a barrier uh, between those of us who uh, uh, speak English as a primary language or language of birth uh, to those who don't, those who speak Spanish, those who speak Italian, any of the other languages that we've identified, we have to make sure that the effort and outreach is, is fluent in the language to reach the people where they're at. If they are a resident of Westchester County, they need to be counted. All the other arguments that are being made in the federal government, those are political arguments to be made at a different time. The census uh, should count each individual. 
And my understanding of the law is that it is not just to count the number of citizens, it is to count the number of residents of the county. So citizenship uh, is not uh, the essential uh, element, it is your residency here. And of course, as you can imagine, if you reside here, you consume services here. You drink water, uh, you produce uh, sewerage, and a host of different things for which we have to provide as a government the proper services. So all of those things are important. Uh, I signed an executive order, and uh, this committee is uh, 21 appointed individuals. They've agreed to serve through uh, the end of March of 2021, which is the year after the census shall be completed. We believe that we'll see results on or about this day in 2021. Uh, 20 years ago, when I was a member of the Board of Legislators, actually chair of the Board of Legislators at that time, uh, it became the basis to uh, redistrict for uh, uh, after what was then the 2000 census in 2001. And so this committee will stay intact to do whatever work happens and to try to help us market and figure out uh, how we're doing in each of those different things. Um, I just want to uh, verbally list uh, those who were with us today, uh, and we're going to have our two co-chairs speak in a second. But uh, those who are with us today include Avni Mustafa, Lou Sanchez, Dr. Terry Kirshner, Shari Sanchez, Gerandi Martinez, Co-Chair Edgar Santana, David Imamura, Gada Salim, Rich Payne, Kim Snyder. Uh, we're very honored to have Judge Francis Nikolai as part of this. Uh, Simra Brandon, Carola Bracco, who is also a co-chair of the committee. And then we have individuals who are not able to be with us today, Rabbi uh, Ivan Hammerman, Ali Boak, and uh, Caitlin Penner. And uh, we're happy that uh, all of these people have agreed to serve. They serve without compensation. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but um, but the, they're serving with great enthusiasm. And, and to, a, to an individual, each of them have indicated how uh, happy they are to be able to take their talent and their skill and to bring it into this committee, help us develop a marketing plan, help us develop an outreach plan that we will do with concert, with the state, with the local governments. We're not looking to create a separate silo of activity here if the city or the village or the town is looking to do some different uh, efforts. And we know that uh, since this is an unprecedented effort, we'll have unprecedented good results. So with that, uh, let me uh, introduce first our Commissioner of Planning, uh, Norma Drummond, she is the staff person on board with the planning department that will be the liaison to this uh, committee. She is the guru of things that relate to planning and statistical data, and uh, she's, she's worked in the county government for a long, long time, has a very distinguished record on a host of different areas, and we're very happy that Norma will be adding her professional talent to help this committee accomplish its mission. Commissioner. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> data is so critical to a planning department and to anybody that uses it. Um, it's to understand that the data that comes out of the census will really be in use for the 10 years afterwards until we are faced with the next decen decennial census. You did get the word right. Um, but it's really important, not just for the county government, but municipalities use that data. School districts use that data. Local nonprofits use that data. The data translates into dollars that come to Westchester to help us with housing, to help us with Medicaid and medical services reimbursement. So that the, the importance of having every person in Westchester counted and participate in this effort really, really can't be understated. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Now in their first act of uh, coordination, I'm gonna ask both Carola Bracco and uh, Edgar Santana to come to the microphone together. We'll see how they coordinate their first <laughs> appearance as we go forward. Uh, they each have distinguished involvements in a host of different areas uh, in the county, and uh, Carola has been involved countywide with a particular emphasis in northern Westchester. Edgar has been involved in a number of different activities, uh, labor unions, and heavily within the city of Yonker from the southern part of Westchester. So we couldn't think of uh, two better people to coordinate together. Well, as mom always says, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm really looking forward to working with this committee on this project. I think it's going to be a challenge. We have our work cut out for us. This is the most litigated census that we've ever had in this country, and that's also causing a significant amount of distrust among the community. So we're going to have our work cut out for us. I'm looking forward to making, as a committee, to making recommendations to the county on the work that we can be doing to make sure that we reach those hard-to-reach communities. So thanks. thanks to the committee for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. 
<laughs> first, I would like to thank the county executive and the county legislator, legislature uh, for appointing all of us as a whole, as a committee. This committee is of critical importance. The Complete Count Committee has a very important task of encouraging everyone living within the county to be counted. There are segments of the population that may have concerns or reservations standing up because of the valid fears undocumented individuals face in the county. But they must be counted because a skewed census would hurt the towns, cities, and villages where the undocumented live. It would impact services that are designed to help them. So we're planning to do this. We're looking forward to working with everyone here, the stakeholders that serve, the undocumented, and everyone else to make sure that every single person is counted. Thank you again, Mr. County Executive, and I'm looking forward to working with everyone. I want to highlight, too, that our concerns about um, undercount is not merely those who might be um, undocumented. Uh, people who are poor, in general, are, are much harder to find and count in our communities, uh, where we deal with multifamily apartment buildings, where we deal with the distrust of authority figures when they come knocking on the door. It can be much more difficult to count uh, all sorts of people, all different demographics, where there's, a, there's an element of poor. Youth is a factor as well, and sometimes age is a factor where uh, that's a difficult situation. You know, the, the classic thought that you have, your basic suburban street, there's about 10 houses on each side of the street. They're all single-family houses. The census taker goes down the street with a clipboard, knocks on the first door. A uh, man comes to the door and says it's uh, him and his wife and his three kids, and he writes it down, he goes to the next house. That presumes a, uh, a type of structure that is by no means uh, what we expect to see in, in 2019 and 2020. Uh, as much as uh, I grew up in a family and we didn't know why we didn't function the way that, uh, you know, the Cleavers did from Leave it to Beaver, we seem to be more dysfunctional a family <laughs> compared to them. Families come in all different shapes and sizes, individuals. Uh, are uh, living in various units and the kinds of housing structures we have are very different. So that classic census taker going down the street asking questions is an outdated model and we're going to need to be creative and what Edgar and Carola are going to be using is the skill set that they've developed uh, over the course of their career along with all of these other wonderful people that have agreed to serve uh, to take their various experiences and bring them into the mix. How do we come up with a plan to, uh, to make sure that these folks are, uh, they know that the census is here, people's fears about what questions they're asked have been walked through. I've talked to people who, um, you know, didn't mind saying I live here, but they had a big problem giving more detailed data beyond that and would prefer not to be counted. So those, those are barriers that we're going to have to try to overcome in, in all of what we're doing. Um, in, in putting this together, I've been very ably assisted by our Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins, who is with us here, obviously. We have some other members of my executive team. Our County Attorney John Nona is with us. Obviously, you have our Director of Communications, Catherine Chaffee, who organizes these things. Andrew Ferris, our Chief of Staff. Uh, from the office of uh, Congresswoman Nita Lowy, we're joined by Pat Keegan, uh, who's a longtime, extremely effective District Office Director. Pat, stand up so everybody can see, and thank you for your hard work. And by extension uh, to uh, the Congresswoman, who I know is very busy for us in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have many members uh, of the committee that are here. Like everybody who's on the committee to please stand up. That's probably everybody in the room. But if you're on the committee, please stand up and accept our thanks for your willingness for public service. And I'm going to ask one of those members, uh, uh, Judge Frank Nicolai, to join us here. Uh, Judge Nicolai uh, has a distinguished public service. He has served. Uh, as the head of the Ninth Judicial District uh, Judiciary, which is the rough equivalent of what the leader of the Board of Legislators is to the legislative branch and what the county executive is to the county branch. This I've always treated as the highest ranking judicial position in the county with responsibility for all the judicial services of the county and, and held by Frank, uh, a, a friend of many years and an outstanding public servant. Frank, please share a few thoughts. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, first, let me uh, thank the county executive for uh, giving me this opportunity to serve on this most important and uh, critical uh, committee for our county. Uh, I look forward to working with my colleagues, uh, devoting our time, talent, and energy to ensure that the county has an accurate and complete census count. It's a challenging job. Uh, we have a great deal to do, but I am very confident when it's all said and done, we will accomplish our mission and be successful. Thank you. And I want to especially thank our Deputy Director of Operations, Emily Saltzman. Emily, please stand up. 
Emily did uh, yeoman's work in helping pull this committee together, and, and this could not have happened without you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you for your public service again, once again. So with that thought in mind, we'll open it up to any questions that anyone in the press may have, uh, and you're certainly welcome to interview as soon as we're finished here any of the individuals in one-on-one -on -one interviews. Any questions that we can ask? Yeah, I, you know, I don't think it's a necessary question uh, for the, uh, you know, for the census as a personal opinion. Now, uh, some courts have adjudicated that it's not the necessary, it's not necessary either, not necessarily appropriate. The Supreme Court apparently is going to get the case. We have a new Supreme Court, so I'm sure they're going to opine uh, uh, on this, and uh, we'll see what happens. But, you know, um, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear that there's a policy difference that uh, our government has and the state government has with the current federal government. And uh, most likely we wouldn't be creating these 2020 complete count committees if we had a confidence that, not that the professionalism of the Census Department was there, we believe that the, that the federal Census Department is a professional organization, but we're not convinced that the uh, political leadership of the nation really wants to see areas like New York counted. I think if they see the world through colored eyes of what's blue and what's red, uh, then I don't think that they really care as much about having an accurate count, but we care. And so we're going to make those extra efforts within what is within our authority to do. And uh, I think perhaps that's the basis for that question, more, more less about understanding a fact and more about trying to discourage a count so that uh, congressional <laughs> representation can follow that decision. But that's just subjective on my part. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything else you'd like to ask? If not, then th uh, what? We got a question? Yes? Uh, Commissioner? The one crime in this country is scams against seniors, and we tell them all the time, don't answer your door, don't mm -hmm. answer your telephone. Well, what are you going to do to get them to be comfortable enough to answer the door? Well, well you we have do. just identified. <laughs> you know what they say, don't, don't, don't volunteer information, you get appointed to head the committee. Um, <laughs> May, this is, uh, by the way, this is May Carpenter, who is a commissioner of our senior services in Westchester County. Uh, this is one of the issues that we expect this committee to deal with. And they're going to be dealing with a host of those issues because that is true with senior citizens. And, and it, you know, there's a question of how do you reach seniors under those circumstances? How do you reach, as I said, how do you reach young people? You know, uh, how do you reach people with different demographic backgrounds? How do you reach people in certain urban parts of the county where it's hard to get in and out of all the housing units? How do you do it in the rural parts of the county where you have great distances involved between uh, point A to point B. Uh, the census has uh, done a lot of its work through mail and then with a follow-up piece uh, to it. And I think that the answer to that question uh, hopefully will be some strategies that come out of what this committee will be able to develop. And I know that when they touch on a topic like this, they're going to invite you to come and speak and describe what your experiences have been and, and perhaps some strategies that you think that might uh, you know, help overcome. I think we're going to rely a lot just in general on uh, community organizations. I think we're going to look for, as an example, all the many senior centers that have recreational programs every day in every one of the 45 municipalities of Westchester County as a cutting edge. We're going to look at church organizations that organize in a certain fashion and have a, a significant portion of uh, senior organizations, church meeting or religious groups, churches, synagogues, mosques, etc. Um, and I think those will be some of the strategies. But I'll leave it to the committee to develop the strategies as they develop the strategies into some type of marketing plan with the consult uh, from Norma and her professional staff, then will come the efforts that we have to do either to do it directly with the census or to do ancillary, uh, auxiliary efforts in addition to what the census team is going to do. So, any other questions? We're good. Thank you so much, and do feel free to uh, discuss with any of our friends here or any of the people on the committee uh, their point of view. Thank you for coming, and have a wonderful day.